In this video I will show you two simple tricks how to maintain your objectivity while mixing an orchestral mock-up. That you know for sure that all the adjustments, all the tiny adjustments that you have done make the track sounding better. Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. I'm a Dutch media composer and on my channel you can listen to my music and watch videos about how to write orchestral music for film and video. So if you want to get better in that, in orchestration, in creating more realistic orchestral mock-ups, then start now by subscribing and clicking that little bell. So let's start with tip number one, using a raw version of your original composition. So nothing done, nothing mixed, just the raw version and use that as a reference track while mixing your orchestral MIDI mockup. So we're in our mixing template and for the people who have a good eye for the small details, already noticed that this H was highlighted during all the former videos. And that means in logic that I have hidden a couple of tracks and one of them I made it visible and that is this track and that has everything to do with trick number one using the raw version of your composition your MIDI mockup bounce that as an audio file and use that as a reference track to get more objectivity for your mixing version what I want to do is simply start by listening to the entire track and flipping between the raw version and the mixed version so you can hear the difference and it's up to you if you think that the mixed version sounds better than the raw version when you are doing this at home don't only listen to it on your headphones but also listen to the to both versions on your monitor speakers because that's really important because a headphone can trick you a little bit uh, when it comes to stereo image. So also listen to it on your monitor speakers if you have them. All right, so this is just a simple listen exercise to create a little bit more objectivity while mixing your orchestral MIDI mockup. So let's start listening to the track show opener and we start with the raw version and I keep flipping it to the mixed version, the raw version, the mixed version, so you can hear the difference. major difference and that is exactly what I've told you in the last video all the tiny adjustments that you have done on each single track will have a big enormous sometimes a huge effect on the total track when you listen to all the tracks together with all the plugins and all the tiny adjustments and this is exactly the way to get that objectivity what the adjustment cause for an effect and in this case, I think it really sounds better. And yes, the effect is enormous. The mix has much more, uh, much more clear sound, more width, more depth. It just sounds better. All right, that's, that is trick number one, using a bounced version of your raw composition, your MIDI mockup with no mixing, no editing whatsoever, and compare it with your mixed version. So trick number two is actually the same as trick number one, but in this case, we use a reference track, which is a professional mixed and mastered track. 
a music track from out of your music library. And in my case, I have used one of the tracks of John Williams, the Mission theme, which he has composed for the NBC News. And I've told this before in one of the comments on the videos of this free masterclass. And this is the track that I have used. And this is not a fair comparison, let's be honest. The track of John Williams, which I have used, is a live recording, professionally mixed and mastered. But we have the ambition to get as close as possible to that sound. And we're not yet at the mastering, this is the mixing. But we try to get as close as possible during mixing to that sound. And you have to listen to the sound of the instruments, but also the balance of the instrument. Are they proper balanced in our template, in our mix? All right. The mission theme, that is my reference track. Why? Because it has the same mood, the same feeling, the same instruments. And in a typical section, the first section, I have used the same instruments as John Williams did in his composition. So that is a good comparison piece of the music track. And we are going to listen to that. But before we do that, one thing is really important. You have to adjust the volume of the music track that you use as a reference because that track will be much more louder than your mix. And let's be honest, let's be honest to yourself. Have you ever been in the position that you have worked on a mix and you knew that something wasn't right in the mix? And the only thing that you did was cranking up the volume and then listened to the mix again. And you thought, wow, no. Oh, it actually sounds pretty nice. That can't be true. You haven't adjusted anything to the mix. You, you haven't adjusted an EQ, a compression, uh, a width, uh, a reverb. No, you haven't done anything. You only turned up the volume. It's, it's, a, it's forbidden to do that. Because the mind tricks us. It loves music that sounds louder. We think that we hear a much more fuller low end, which isn't there. Because when we turn down the volume, you won't hear that full low end. So don't get tricked. Let's be honest to ourselves and get that objectivity. And this is trick number two, to get that objectivity. So let's listen to the section, which I think is a fair comparison. Uh, it's up to you if you think uh, we that we get close enough to this professional music track because that is our ambition. We want to get as close as possible during mixing and we want to get as close as possible while we master this version. All right, let's listen to it. I think we did a pretty well job. In my humble opinion, we got close enough to this professional music track. So I was pleased with this end result. Two simple tricks, more objectivity and a better mixing result. Next week, we start with a new chapter. We're going to master this track to get that professional sound. And it's going live next week, next Thursday, 5 p.m. See you then.